To all our friends at the gallery, today we're very excited to introduce to you Clifford Bailey, the famous artist born in 1927 that's also a nurturer of bonsai plants. Welcome to our gallery, Clifford. Thank you, Monica. I was born in London in 1927. From the age of about six, my father was good enough to send me to a little private art class and uh, then uh, I actually won a little art competition, national one, it was for Andrews Liver Salts. <laughs> and um, I don't quite know what I did for it, but uh, that was my first introduction to the competitive world of the arts. I knew you'd ask me that awkward one. Hundreds, thousands possibly. I'm so very, very old, you see, that's the trouble. He wanted to buy a painting of mine, which was in the Royal Academy, and it was rather a big one. And uh, he went to the desk and found that it had already sold. So he rang me up and I gave him my telephone number. He asked me if I'd got any more like that, and I said no, but I could do one specially for him. So he said, would you do that? come up to my place, my little flat in the West End, and uh, we'll measure up the walls for it. So we did that, and it was a good job we measured it because the painting that he wanted was far too big. But I said, yes, I can do you a version of that, not exactly the same, but a version of it. So I did that and delivered it um, eventually, and uh, I delivered it in my old Volkswagen van, which I left outside on the street with the lights going, the parking lights, and uh, he called me in and said, could you help me hang it? So that took another hour, and uh, then uh, he wanted to have a drink to celebrate, and he said, I suppose you want paying. So I said, yes, please, I'm a starving artist, I need the money. So he said, oh, all right. So he got out his checkbook with a printed um, racing car on it and uh, wrote me the check and uh, then I left and when I got outside the lights on my car had gone out and the battery had gone dead. So he would shut the door on me by then. So I thought well there's no phone box near here, there weren't any iPhones then. So um, I had to knock at his door and say, look, I'm stranded, could I ring the RAC or the AA, as it was in Britain then? And uh, he said, no, he said, I'll start you. And he got out his big Renault and came over and jump-started me. Who's been jump-started by a top Formula One racing driver? <laughs> it's one thing I can boast about. But um, there's more to that story, but I won't, I won't tell you the sequel now. That'll have to come another time. I did meet Prince Charles, not to shake hands, no physical contact, but I was at the private view at the Royal Academy because I'd got a painting in that year and uh, he came as one of the guests with Diana and uh, they came round and nodded at everybody and said hello generally to people and uh, we were one of those people. And uh, then later I was asked by him if I'd come and paint the gardens, his gardens, at Highgrove, which is where he lives, in uh, Buckinghamshire, I think, or Gloucestershire. And uh, he um, bought one of the paintings I did. I did four big paintings, and he bought one, and uh, it was looking down the garden towards his house, and I gave him one. Uh, which was a present from me to him in response for being able to paint there. And uh, that was one of the wild flower garden that he was rather proud of, a, a field full of wild flowers in front of the house again. I was asked by Collins to um, 
illustrate a children's dictionary they were bringing out and uh, the format of the dictionary was um, to for the type to predominate the the text to predominate but the paintings would be or the illustrations would be in the margins which were quite generous in the book and uh, so each illustration had to be possibly no more than 50 millimeters and um, the drawings had to be actual size which is pretty small so I used watercolor pencils and they wanted 400 objects and uh, my wife did all the research for me so that I had to work from all sorts of different material old engravings photographs the actual things when I could and uh, this was published some time ago now and uh, it's out of print unfortunately but um, that was took me quite a while yes I started those in Britain when I lived there and couldn't bring them out with me when I moved out here 15 years ago um, they wouldn't let things like that in you see because they would harbour insects and things and uh, so I sold them off over there and um, when I came over here I was cutting my hedge and little clippings fell on the ground and they were rather nice and they were this jade tree type and uh, I thought well I wonder if I stuck them in the ground whether they'd grow and they did and uh, they grow fairly quickly so you have to trim them fairly regularly but that was good for me because I got instant bonsais within about five years they've grown fat trunks and roots and uh, I've only recently joined the bonsai club in Perth and I found out you know a lot more about what I've done wrong and what I have done correctly and I just enjoy doing it I don't want young artists to become bigoted about their views on art I want them to be very broad but unfortunately a lot of them are not at the moment but um, my daughter was um, about six years of age and I was painting in my studio and the windows were open and uh, the voices came through from my daughter and I heard her say well my dad oh well, no it was the other way around her little friend actually um, said well my dad is an, a bank manager and uh, so I waited to hear what my daughter would say and my daughter said well my dad is an artist there was a long silence and then the little girl said never mind so that's a cautionary tale don't take yourself too seriously all the time <laughs>